Hi everybody, the farmers protest is back. Farmers travel to New Delhi and demand guaranteed prices for their crops. Police in Delhi have banned all public gatherings ahead of a threatened march on India's capital on Tuesday by thousands of protesting farmers. Uh, this is very significant and what it is is in many ways a continuation of the farmers' protests in 2020. This time it's more powerful, more assaulting and more effective because this is the year of the general elections in India. Now, our Biggest electoral battle of the decade. So as usual, while the current government is trying its best to avoid a PR nightmare, the opposition is trying its best to topple the image of the BJP and use it to their advantage. Indian opposition leader Rahul Gandhi has reportedly halted his pan-India march to join the farmers' protest. Ki India ki sarkar aayegi. तो हम एमएसपी की गारंटी हिंदुस्तान के किसानों को देंगे। While on one side the farmers are being labelled as the voice of Indian agriculture, on the other side they are also being labelled as anti-national just like last time. But while all other media houses are busy covering the political aspect of this conflict, very few are covering the economic aspect of the farmers' demand. And the economics is where the real debate should be. So in this episode today, let's cut through the clutter and do a deep dive and try to understand what exactly are the farmers protesting about, what are their demands, in spite of farmers being so important, why is the government not fulfilling their demands and most importantly, what is the economic impact of these demands. And if you find this case study valuable, do share it with as many people as possible so that the opinions can be made on the basis of economics and not political drama. But before we move on, I want to quickly thank our partners of today's episode and that is Odoo, which is an enterprise resource planning software that covers all your company needs. Last time we showed you the e-commerce builder, but now let's dive into the magic of Odoo's customer relationship management app. Odoo's CRM seamlessly integrates with a range of applications such as sales, invoicing, marketing and project management and it even offers you a unified platform for comprehensive business management. If you have a website, you can link it with Odoo's CRM to get leads. And even better, if you have a website on Odoo, you can fully integrate it with the CRM app. You can see the leads pipeline in different views such as map, pivot table, calendar and much more. And one of the most effective tools is the Kanban view. This view simplifies the workflow management and allows users to fluidly move opportunities through stages. Each opportunity is elegantly presented as a card and provides a snapshot of all crucial information required. You can schedule calls, make to-dos and even take meetings effortlessly. Whether it's through the chatter or the general view, Odoo ensures all communication is centralized to provide easy access to conversation history. And as always, the first app is absolutely free for a lifetime. So if this sounds amazing to you, click the link below and explore Odoo's CRM from the link in the description. And now, on with the episode. Chalo, as usual, let's start with the first question. Why are the farmers protesting and what exactly are their demands? So firstly, the farmers have a lot of demands from debt waiver to electricity bill to even pensions. But the most important and critical demand of all is the demand for something called the MSP or minimum support price. In simple words, the minimum support price is the fixed amount that the government is supposed to pay the farmers regardless of the demand and supply in the market. For example, let's say the government sets the minimum support price of rice to be 30 rupees a kilo or 3000 rupees a quintal and the cost of production is 2000 rupees per quintal for the farmer. But this year, if the demand for rice is very less and the supply of rice is very high, then the market price for rice will drop to 2000 rupees per quintal. Now, as a farmer, you can't sell your rice at a profitable rate in the open market for 2000 rupees a quintal, right? Because your cost of production itself is 2000 rupees per quintal. But guess what? Here's where, because of the MSP, you will have the option to sell your rice to the government at a guaranteed price of 3000 rupees per quintal. So, this MSP is supposed to provide farmers with the safety and farmers will not face severe financial losses even if the market conditions are unfavorable. 
On the other hand, if the market price for the rice is higher than the MSP, then you as a farmer can easily sell your rice to the normal wholesalers. So this way, the farmers could feel safe, their cost price could be recovered, and the government becomes the savior for the farmers. And then, the rice that the government procures can be distributed to the poor or can be sold to private buyers by the government itself. In India, if you see, the Food Corporation of India procures rice and wheat at MSPs and distributes it through the public distribution system. So the question over here is, what exactly is the problem with the current MSP system? And why exactly are the farmers protesting? Well, firstly, it is not compulsory for the government to procure crops at MSP. In fact, out of the 23 crops for which the MSP is announced, majorly only rice and wheat are procured by the Food Corporation of India to distribute to the poor. And this number of farmers who get MSP is so less that less than 7% of the farmers in India actually see any benefit from the MSP. Secondly, even in rice and wheat, there is such a huge difference that while in Punjab, almost every wheat and rice farmer gets to sell their produce at MSP prices, in Uttar Pradesh, only 3.6% of the farmers are able to sell their produce at MSP. So now, the farmers are demanding that there should be an MSP declared for all 23 crops and the minimum support price must be their legal right. So with this Delhi Chalo March, what are the demands to guarantee MSP for the crops? MSP, that's the benchmark price that's set by the government for 20 crops twice a year to boost farmers' income. They want at least 50% profit over the production cost, monthly pensions for farmers over 60 years and land in the capital to honour martyrs of previous protests. Thirdly, the farmers are proposing a specific method to calculate the MSP. So if you look at the current setup, the Commission for Agricultural Costs and Prices is the brain behind calculating MSP. And they look at two major costs for growing crops across all states and the whole country. The first variable is A2 cost. This includes everything that the farmers spend money on, like seeds, fertilizers, pesticides, paying workers, fuel and watering the crops. And then there is a variable called FL. This variable adds to A2 by estimating the value of work done by the farmer's family. So if the farmer or their family members work on the farm without getting paid, this variable puts a price on that effort. So the CACP takes the total of A2 and FL and calls it the cost of production. And then the MSP is set at A2 plus FL plus 50% of A2 plus FL. If this is very, very clear to you, let's try to understand how do the farmers propose the MSP to be calculated today. The farmers wanted to be calculated according to the Swaminathan Commission report and in this report, along with A2 and FL, the cost of production variable also includes another parameter X to turn this variable into C2. This X is supposed to be the interest on the value of owned capital assets, rent paid for leased in land or the rental value of owned land. Now I know this sounds very complicated, so let's make it simple for you to understand. Let's say Priya is a farmer who owns farming equipments worth 2 lakh rupees and her farm is of 1 acre which could fetch a rental value of 20,000 rupees. So now, the Swaminathan Commission says that since Priya has invested 2 lakhs into farm equipments and is using her own land for cultivation, there are two opportunity costs involved. Firstly, her 2 lakh rupees if put in FD could have gotten her 5% interest and the land if rented would have gotten her 20,000 rupees per month. So her opportunity cost due to farming in her own land is 5% of 2 lakh rupees plus 20,000 in rent which is 10,000 rupees plus 20,000 rupees per month in rent which comes to 10,000 plus 2.4 lakhs equal to 2.5 lakh rupees in opportunity cost. This is the value of X in our equation and the report says that the MSP must be calculated as A2 plus FL plus X plus 50% of A2 plus FL plus X and this A2 plus FL plus X is considered to be C2. So the formula is C2 plus 50% of C2. Now the question over here is, what exactly is the difference that this one variable could make to the MSP of the farmers? Well, to put this into perspective, this chart shows how much more the farmers would earn if their MSP was calculated using the C2 plus 50% formula. And if we see this chart, there is a 9 to 40% difference in the C2 plus 50% formula as compared to the current formula. So long story short, the farmers can earn a lot more if the MSP calculation is done with C2 plus 50% formula. This is the reason why the farmers are demanding for this formula to be used to calculate the MSP.
So now the question is, if the farmers can get more safety, if the farmers can make more money because of this MSP calculation, and when the government can use the produce for public distribution, then why is the government opposing the MSP? Doubts arising because of these laws about MSP may not be with adequate basis. The MSP levels will go up by 25 to 30 percent. But uh, I'm sorry, economics doesn't speak about that type of pricing. That will create a major chaos in the system. Well, firstly, the cost factor is a huge concern. If we implement a law to guarantee MSP for all crops produced in the country, it could potentially create a financial burden of around 40 lakh crores on the government. You know how much money that is? It is 80% of our entire budget of the country. And it is six times of our entire defense budget. Secondly, even if we stick to just 23 crops under the MSP, the cost of the government would still be close to 10 lakh crores, which is again 1.4 times of our entire defense budget and our entire capital expenditure. So this capital expenditure budget, which is right now being used to build infrastructure in India, will be used to procure just crops at MSP. So instead of constructing new bridges, airports and Vande Bharat trains, this money will just go into the implementation of MSP procurement. Thirdly, if the farmers get to know that the government will pay a fixed price regardless of the demand and supply, they will deliberately produce more crops even if there is less demand so that they can make more money out of the produce. It's like today if a farmer knows that the market demands only 500 tons of rice from his farm, he will produce around 500 tons of crops only. But if he gets fixed cost regardless of the demand, he will double his production to 1000 tons. So the farmers will make more money in the short term, but this surplus rise from millions of farmers all across the country will lead to a demand supply nightmare. As a result, next year, when the government is about to procure rice from the exact same farmers, the government will have to decrease the MSP to such an extent that they can strike a balance between demand and supply. So in the short term, the farmers might make money, but in the long term, because of oversupply, the MSP will come down to rock bottom rates and again, the farmers will experience a nightmare. But now the question over here is, the government can sell these crops to private players and then make a profit, right? Well, you tell me guys, if the Food Corporation of India procures wheat at 3000 rupees a quintal and there is so much supply that the market itself is paying only 2000 rupees a quintal, how can the government sell this produce at a profit? So in simple words, unless the government buys all the crops in the country, the government cannot tweak the supply and demand forces of the market. And if the government just buys every grain of wheat in the country and then increases the price of wheat to 5,000 rupees a quintal, what will happen? The farmers will be very happy, but people like you and me will start protesting because we will face inflation because of the government. Fourthly, there is a fundamental flaw in the calculation of the new MSP formula. Why? Because if the new MSP formula is adopted, the government will have to fix prices based on varying land rents across states. Now, considering the vast difference in the land rental cost between Mumbai and Delhi to the rural areas in Odisha or Manipur, it is a daunting task altogether just to calculate the rentals. And even if they implement the system, who will decide what will be the rent of the land? So again, instead of market forces, is the government supposed to decide the rent of the land? And even if they do, a farmer in Mumbai will get a much better MSP than a farmer in Odisha who is producing the same quality and quantity of wheat. So then, the rural farmers will start protesting against low MSP and discrimination against them. And lastly, the experts have raised concerns that imposing MSP could adversely affect India's exports and it could lead to inflation in India. In simple words, if MSP causes procurement costs of wheat to rise from 3000 rupees a quintal to 5000 rupees a quintal even during a less demand season, then the export prices of Indian wheat will stay above 5000 rupees a quintal even when the international sellers sell at 4000 rupees a quintal. So India being a huge exporter of agricultural products, we cannot afford to play with our exports. And since agriculture is 11% of our exports, if we fall weak in this sector of exports, then it would lead to a vicious cycle where our import-export gap will need more dollars to fund imports. That could devalue the rupee and that will again lead to current account deficit and inflation which will further make exports of India tricky. So long story short, if the state intervenes to fix prices, it could disrupt the market equilibrium leading to a financial disaster. This is the argument of the people who are supporting the government. And this brings us to the next question. If the MSP could cause a disaster to the Indian economy, 
what is the counter argument that the farmers have? Well, firstly, the critics point out that the cost of implementing MSP is not as much as stated. So they say that when you look at the whole picture of 23 crops under MSP for 2023-2024, the total value of these crops at MSP adds up to 15 lakh crores. But the catch over here is that not all of this produce hits the market because farmers keep a chunk for their own use, for feeding animals, for seeds and for paying workers in kind. On top of that, some of it gets spoiled. So roughly one third of the MSP crops do not hit the market. So this leaves about 10 lakh crores worth of crops. Now out of this, the government and agencies purchase around 4 to 5 lakh worth of produce and the private sector snaps up 5 to 6 lakh rupees worth of produce. And this procurement by the private sector is usually done at 25% lower price than MSP. So in simple words, the private sector procures 5 lakh crores worth of crops at a 25% discount. So the real cost if the MSP is considered to be a base price would be around 6.25 lakh crores. So if the government procures the crops and makes MSP mandatory, then even private sector will pay 6.25 lakh crores to farmers instead of 5 lakh crores. So the farmers say that if MSP was legally guaranteed, the private sector will be forced to shell out another 1 to 1.5 lakh crores to match the MSP rates. So the farmers say that when the government could reduce corporate tax rates in 2019 and sacrifice 1.5 lakh crores for the corporates, then why can't they shell out another 1.5 lakh crores for the farmers? In fact, a crisis study even stated that the real cost to the government would only be about 21,000 crores for 2023. Secondly, there is an argument that the government is not able to store existing food grains and even today, we waste thousands of tons of grains just because of lack of storage. As I speak today, lakhs of metric tons of food grain are rotting in the open amidst rains in Madhya Pradesh. This story of rotting wheat is perhaps an indication of why, despite surplus production of food grains, India is still at the 100th spot on the hunger index. While food grain production has gone up, storage capacity at different levels has terribly lagged behind. Granaries are overflowing, grain is rotting at the time because yet again there is no storage space. So the question is, if the government procures all the crops at MSP, how will the government store these grains? For this, the counter argument is that the government's job with MSP is just to control the base price. In simple words, if the MSP set at 3,000 rupees a quintal and the private players as of now are paying only 2,000 rupees a quintal, then if MSP is made a legal right, then the farmers will not sell to private players at all. They will simply go and sell to the government at 3,000 rupees a quintal. So when private players see that no one is selling to them at below 3,000 rupees a quintal, they will by default increase their offering to 3,000 rupees a quintal or above. So this side of the argument says that MSP is just a price regulator and eventually when the private players increase their price, the government will not have to buy more than it needs. And lastly, there's another argument which says that if the government procures all the crops, the government can sell the produce at a profit and make money instead of giving it all away in subsidies. In simple words, if all the rice is bought by the government at 3000 rupees a quintal, the government will become a monopoly and then they can sell this rice at 4000 rupees and make a profit. So this counter argument says that the government just has to take the pain of procuring the produce from the farmers and then they can make a profit by selling it to other private players. These are the counter arguments that the farmers have against the government. This is the story, background, economics, pros and cons of the MSP demand of the farmers. And now you can decide on the basis of the argument and counter argument which side you want to favor. That's all from my side for today, guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube ever happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.